Hey, what's up my little Tattletales? How y'all doing today? Well, welcome back to the Kardashian Recap Season 3, Episode 7, y'all. Let's get right into this mess. Kim, Kim should be ashamed of herself. I know I say that every single episode, but y'all, I really mean it this time. Kim did Courtney so dirty. And honestly, Kim sat down with Courtney. We're gonna get into that. Y'all know this is super detailed, play by play. So buckle up, right? Kim thought she was gonna do something. Yo, I don't see, listen, Kim can pass law school all she wants. I don't see how she's gonna be arguing in a court of law because Courtney ran circles around her and had her exposing herself. And Chloe, when you find out the true story behind what happens, it's even grimier than they led us to believe, right? And Chloe, knowing all this, is literally trying to run interference. But I have a theory on that. You know why? Because I think that Courtney woke up to the game and Chloe is busy still being a flunky. As long as she can run that money back to pin Mama Chris and Kim, she's gonna be okay. But you know what? Let's get into the first scene. Baby, this episode, you know what? I will say this episode was good. Now I say that because I've been watching it every single week, but let's drop it, let's drop it, let's go. Okay, so the scene opens with dramatic music. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Kim pulls up and starts walking in to Courtney's Spanish style villa, right? She walks up the stairs. Listen, Princess Courtney is being pampered. She is getting a manicure and pedicure on her nails. She's like, I'm sorry, I just have to take this foil off. Let me just say one thing about Courtney. She is just as spoiled as all the other Kardashians. However, I give her a pass because Courtney makes having money look fun. She's never bored. She's never annoyed. She's always so happy and joyous. And it's like she remembers what's happening. It's super cool. She's not trying to pretend, oh my God, I'm so grateful for all my blessings. She's actually showing through her actions that she's grateful for all of God's blessings. The baby, she's enjoying it. That's right, Courtney. Money looks good on you. Anyway, Kim comes in and I guess she thought that Courtney would be alone. So you could tell she's a little thrown off. And she climbs on the bed and then Courtney's like, in like the little chair getting pampered by the manicure and pedicure. She's like, I'm so sorry, I have to get this off. Also, I lost the batteries to my remote and I don't even know how to turn the TV off. So it's been on for the last five weeks and Kim's like all, like it's a little tense. She's like, that's so you, right? So anyway, Courtney is like, okay, thanks ladies, right? And then she goes and she sits on the bed with Kim and baby, Kim already starts with the BS. She's like, okay, so. This all started when Dolce & Gabbana wanted to do a Skims collaboration with me. And the funny thing is, as soon as Kim starts, you see the Aries and Courtney blare up. But like most Aries, you know, when Aries are younger, they're very much like, ah, yeah, let's go. Yes, Kim. When they get older, they still have that finish the mentality. Oh, but they'll let you talk, right? Courtney's skill is she will let somebody talk. She doesn't over talk. She doesn't try to bully. She literally lets somebody make their point so she can take their own logic and finish them. Y'all, Kim didn't stand a chance, but let's get into the combo. Okay, so Kim out the door is literally digging herself in a hole. Here's exactly what she says, right? Okay, so Dulce called me to do a collaboration with Skims. Dulce times skims they wanted me to create it directed and they wanted me to create it and courtney's like mm-hmm mm-hmm and then kim goes and then that collaboration fell apart i've noticed whenever kim is hiding something or in the middle of bsing she double blinks and she pauses she skips a beat it's almost like she's like wait what's the liar she gets guilty like they're gonna know i'm lying because listen to this mess she said you know, and then that fell apart because I couldn't get it. We could, I couldn't get it together in time. So, and then Courtney was like, yeah, and that's, no, she said, so then Courtney was like, yeah, that's the last thing I heard about it. And Kim was like, yeah, because I couldn't get it together in time. And Courtney is just looking at her and y'all, Kim already told on herself one time, and let's see if you can piece it together, but let me finish this conversation. Then I'll piece the pieces together for you. So then Kim continues, okay? 
So then they came when the skin still fell apart. They came to me and they wanted to do this. And I said, listen, I don't want it to do this close to Courtney's wedding. And on top of that, if I do it, I want it to be a completely different vibe, like so different and nothing like what Courtney did. And I also said to them, why are you bringing me, why are you bringing me this still to Creative Direct if the skin still already fell apart because we didn't have time to put it together? Yeah, do you see how things are coming around? Let me, let me finish watching this and I'll be right back. So then Kim goes on to say, so then Dulce called me back and they said, listen, we're going ahead with a 90s archive fashion show. Remember that, okay? And we're going to do it with or without you. We would love for you to creative direct, okay? But we're going to do it with or without you. So then Courtney jumps in. Now she's like, Kim talk. Courtney jumps in and she's like, okay, so here's the thing, like, I didn't expect you to ask for my permission. I'm not trying to control you. But when you, she's like, but I called you and asked you, did you want to come while I was creative directing? And she's like, you asked me if I wanted to come, right? You were asking basically for my blessing. What you let me to believe is the deal was already done. So you weren't asking me how I felt or if it was okay. You were just telling me the deal's done and do I want to tag along and help you creative direct. So then Kim, this one, cause she realizes that she already let the gig up. I'll tell y'all what it is in a second. Kim was like, um, if you could just let me talk. And Courtney is like, mm, go ahead. Because Cor Kim's done nothing but talk. Courtney's maybe talked 10% of this, but y'all, it gets deeper. Okay, pay attention to all the details I gave you cause I'm gonna piece it together in the end. So then Kim tries a new tactic, right? Girl's gonna make a horrible lawyer. She doesn't know how to cross, redirect, she didn't know how to treat a hostile witness. Kimberly, oh, you need to be trained in that, right? So then Kim goes to her and she's like, Courtney, and she's like, okay, so what would you have done though if I had asked you? And and uh, Chloe said, an honest answer. Because in Aries will be honest. She said, I don't know. Because here's the thing, my usual personality, because you know I don't care about stuff like that, would have been like, oh my God, do it. Like, take the money and run. But because it was my wedding and so special and so important, like this just, it was just too special. So then, and she's like, and I honestly don't know how I would have felt about it. So then Courtney was like, you know, my sister doesn't get it. It was my wedding. And the fact that they did this, it takes away all the specialness of my wedding. Now you guys listen, hold judgment. If you're like, oh my God, Courtney, get over it. Because Courtney actually gives receipts into how grimy it was and why she keeps saying you took something from me because Dulce and Gabbana did steal all of Courtney's ideas and did steal all of Courtney's work and did, they were the ones that did Courtney dirty. And Kim, Kim decided to take the money. But you guys, it's worse than that because when Courtney gives the details and she also says, I think that's why Kim didn't ask me, right? She basically snuck around behind my back because she was afraid of what my answer was going to be. So I was the nerve to say, well, Kylie did a campaign and you know, there wasn't all this stuff with, with her and Courtney was like, yeah, but that's different. Y'all. So then Kim goes to a confessional and she says, you know, Kylie did a campaign and she didn't do anything. And that's why I know it's just something with me. It's something inside. She has a problem with me. Kim, Kylie did a God, a GD campaign for sunglasses. If you don't stop playing, you're trying to tell me that out of all those 90 looks that Courtney curated, took time, effort, months, money, curating to build the look of her wedding. Dulce and Gabbana completely stole that from her. And you're comparing that to Kylie swimming around in a swimming pool with some sunglasses on. Kim, Kim literally wants to be a victim so bad. And she just doesn't get how she exposes herself. Oh, but it gets worse. So then Courtney interrupts her and she's like, let me tell you how this started. Mom was at, Chris was at the Dulce and Gabbana fashion show and she sent a video and it was Dulce and Gabbana telling Courtney, oh, Mamma Mia, we would love to like, you know, uh, uh, design your wedding. Um, no, yeah, yeah. We would love to be a part of your wedding. And Courtney says, 
listen, it, it, I was interested because it felt authentic at that point because I have a relationship with Dolce & Gabbana. I literally lived the Dolce Vita life with the summers and the ice cream and all this stuff. Plus, I'm really into that 290s look when Dolce & Gabbana was at their prime. But she said at the same time, there were other designers. There were other designers that wanted to do it big names but the dulce one seemed to make a little sense kim literally goes to the confessional and she's like oh, first of all my wedding was in italy so if you want to talk about somebody copying something first of all kim kanye planned your whole gd wedding you had no involvement kanye bragged about it your wedding was in italy you cannot own a whole continent and your wedding was nothing like Courtney's wedding at all not the style not the vibe nothing as a matter of fact Courtney's wedding was super cool because they even had people bringing speedboats to the island it was but even then you didn't even plan your wedding so shouldn't Kanye be saying this but let's continue hold on then Kim spazzes out in the confessional you, she's like, who sang at your wedding? Who sang at my wedding? Andrea, uh, Andrea Bocelli, Andrea Bocelli, sorry, I know the thing. And she was like, Bocelli is my favorite male singer. And he performed at your wedding too. You, you stole my wedding country and you stole my wedding singer. And you're talking about, I'm stealing your love, Dulce Vita life. Okay. You know what? If that was Courtney's argument, first of all, Kim, shut up. But if that was Courtney's argument, maybe you could say it depends, right? Courtney is arguing that Dulce and Gabbana literally had her doing work for free because she expected a collaboration. She did all the work of creative directing their whole new season. Not even that, if you don't know this, that fashion show by all the looks that Courtney put together and all the archive things. Cause when you pull it out, it's not just what looks pretty, it's what's going to sell, what's going to be by popular demand. And you also have to be slightly ahead of the curve. It's a, being creative director is a big deal. Okay. Courtney did all that for free and she did it because one, it was her, she did it for a wedding, but two, she thought they were going to partner and she was going to be creative director of the show. Dulce Gabbana asking. Courtney is arguing that Dolce & Gabbana screwed her over and you took the money and you didn't care that you were helping outsiders screw over your own flesh and blood. And I don't care how much they paid Kim, it wasn't enough. Kim is a billionaire. Even if they paid Kim 10 million, do you know how little $10 million is to a billionaire? And all Kim had to say was, no, I'm not screwing over my sister. Not even that. Courtney probably could have threatened legal action for them taking her intellectual property for unpaid wages for all this stuff. But because Chris and Kim were involved, she just had to eat it. Y'all, Kim is out of her mind. So then Courtney is like, listen, you don't know this because you never bothered to talk to me. But when Dolce and Gabbana and we sat down for the wedding, they were insisting we do new Dolce, lemons and all white. And she didn't say, it, but she basically said ugly, tacky, like stuff that nobody's buying. Cause honestly, nobody was buying the new Dolce stuff. And she said, I insisted, I'm not going to do that. I want all goth, I want darker vibe, I want this, I want that. I'm not doing it if you insist on making me do the, like, the new Dulce. She literally said, I had to fly Danny, my stylist, and me. We, when we went out to Milan for the first fitting, this is the fitting none of the sisters wanted to go with Courtney to, right? Um, when we first flew out for the fitting, I said, okay, I don't want anything that's on Vogue.com. I don't want to see. I only want stuff before Vogue.com. Stuff from 1990s, right? She said her and her stylist were arguing with Dolce & Gabbana for two days. They were about to walk away from everything because they were like, listen, we are not wearing this ugly mess. Stop it. That's how much this was all Courtney's. Then Kim says, okay, but just to let you know, in 2017 and, and oh and Courtney was like and my whole move board is Monica Bellucci so then she was like just to let you know in 2017 Vogue flew me out 
and they did three custom looks. One was crystals from that I wore white crystal outfit I wore to Celine Dion. And Courtney's like, okay. And she's like, and the other two, like that gray outfit that I had, that was mine. Dolce & Gabbana was like, oh my God, where'd you get that? We don't even have that in our archives. And then, you know, um, there was that, you know that black abomination uh, that Kim wore was like that black cat suit with the crystal bra and panties um, or bo booty shorts. She was like, and I had that. And Dolce was like, oh my God, this isn't even our archives. So what's Courtney was looking at her like, do you, do, are you that dense or do you not see what the issue is? You took my Ghost and Gabbana stole my work product. We're not talking about those two outfits that were in your archives. Kim, I put together 90 looks. And here's the thing Kim admitted earlier that the skim still fell apart. Why? Because they didn't have enough time to creative direct. Kim, if you didn't have enough time to creative direct your own brand, how did you pull together 35 or 40 looks in less than? 48 hours because we saw you fly in. You're proving Courtney's point. The look, first of all, you did not create a direct. The looks were already pulled together. All you did was slap your name on it to, all you did was slap your name on it to get, um, uh, all you did was slap your name on it to get, uh, what am I trying to say? To, to, to get a quick buck. And Dolce and Gabbana are the ones that did all the work. But Courtney's point is they didn't do the work. They stole my work, Kim. And Kim's arguing about two outfits she had in 2017. Y'all, but oh, it gets worse because guess what? Um, Kanye gets mentioned in this, but not in the way you think, y'all. So Courtney is running circles around Kim and Kim keeps exposing herself. She interrupts her and she's like, listen, I think the day, I think the issue is... D Dolce and Gabbana wasn't even thinking about the 90s till I said anything, right? And Kim was like, well, there's only so many looks in the 90s. Like, there's only so many looks. And Courtney's like, mm-hmm. Even though, Kim, that's how you know you didn't do any work on the Dolce and Gabbana. Dolce and Gabbana was huge in the 90s. That was their heyday. Their run each of their runway shows had between 40 and 90 looks on the runway show, right? Some of them had even more than that. You take that for over 15 years. Kim, once you get into accessories, jewelry, handbags, individual pieces, girl, Kim, shut up, right? On top of that, she was like, but the issue is Dolce & Gabbana was not even thinking about doing the 90s until I pulled, until I put together. Then Courtney lets us know that like even, I didn't know this, you know all the beautiful looks that Courtney and Kim had at the wedding? That wasn't Dolce & Gabbana. Courtney dressed everybody down to hair, makeup, everything. She had a very creative vision. Dolce & Gabbana basically stole everything and Kim helped her. And instead of Kim getting mad at Dolce & Gabbana, she's literally trying to argue that she's right with Courtney and she's dead wrong. On top of that, right? On top of that, y'all, Kim, the only outfit that Kim keeps talking about she picked out for herself was the only outfit that stuck out in the wedding. And that was the black crystal and booty short outfit because Kim wanted to show that she had her own Dolce, even though you ruined the whole vibe of the wedding because even then you were trying to stand out and stunt on your sister. Kim's disgusting. She is disgusting. And the fact that you really feel like Courtney stole something from you, but at the end of the day, it's what I mean about Kim. Is it a pathos? You didn't even plan your other wedding. Kanye West did. What are you talking about? He had um, Andre, Andrea, uh, Andrea, what can I say? Uh, singing at the wedding. Kanye had it as a surprise. You didn't plan that. And you got married a decade ago, Kim. It's not like you just got married last year. People are allowed to use your wedding content. Just like Courtney said, had this happened maybe even a year, out, like two years after my wedding, it wouldn't have hurt so much. But this was my wedding. This was something special, Kim. Not even to mention none of the girls supported her at her wedding, at her fittings. They just weren't there. So then Courtney's like, and she makes a good point. Had mom didn't talk to me about this, 
you didn't talk to me about this. You guys both knew because they were sneaking. And Courtney knows that. Kim knows that. But Courtney didn't call her out. And she said, you're allowing brands to come in and use us and de de uh, use us and steal from us and deny us all because we're not having internal conversations. And instead of Kim just being like, yo, like, that's a good point. I really had no idea all this went on. I'm sorry. You know what? Next time we can do it better. I, I didn't understand. I you know, Instead of just even walking back, Kim doubles down because she has to be right, even though she is dead wrong. It's crazy, y'all. So then Kim starts defending Dulce and Gavana, saying, I think that's a reach. Like, it wasn't your wedding. And Kim's like, when I look at the wedding, I'm like, when I look at the show, I'm like, was that my wedding? Everything was stuff that I picked it out. And she's like, no, it wasn't like, you know, the thing with the Madonna, I that's mine. I had worn that. Kim, you wore that in 2016 and you wore a dress and it didn't even look the same. And then she was like, um, and Kimmy is just looking at her like, I can't. Then Kim starts to gaslight her and be like, I don't think it was similar at all. I think it was a completely different vibe than your wedding, you know? And, you know, um, and let's be honest, Courtney, there's only so many things from the 90s. And I at first said to Dolce for some stuff they want, no, I don't want the black belt. I don't want this. That's too much Courtney's wedding. And they were like, this is not Courtney's wedding. This is Dolce. This is Dolce. Dolce and Gabbana, like if they don't get, so basically they did steal from Courtney. They were doing it on purpose. They were doing it to be ignorant. And Kim, these are the same people that said IVF children still believe that they're not real children. These are the same people that are anti-LBGTQ, anti-trans. They are racist. They are homophobic. Kim will do anything for a dollar. And the fact that they're doing this to your own family, I will say one thing about Italians. They respect the institution of family. They respect the idea of family. The fact that they are doing this to your family and you went along, it shows one, they still think that Kardashians are the cheapest people ever. They have no respect for you or your family, right? They think you're stupid. They're making a fool of you. But more importantly, like I said, Kim, they don't have any respect for you and you're too stupid to see it. This is almost like when Pete uh, messaged Kanye. Uh, Kanye is like, where you at? And he's like, in bed with your wife. Eh, and did a picture of him laying in bed um, in, in Kim's bed after they just, who knows, right? The way Kim was too dumb to realize that Pete, this was a drag to you, Kim. Yeah, he's trying to get Kanye, but he's using you as a pawn. Do you realize what this thing he's saying that Kanye says about you? Y'all, let's go. So then Courtney's like, listen, I'm happy to, because Kim's still arguing, you know, there's only so much Italian stuff, Courtney. And Courtney's like, listen, I'm willing to move past this because, you know, I think my bigger issue is the fact that what am I allowed to have? My identity, like, you know, the fact that, you know, it's encroaching. And then Kim gets this smirk on her face and she's like, wow, because that's how I felt about the Christmas lights. Apparently, Courtney had hung up Christmas lights along her doorway the way Kim uh, did one year and Kim flipped out. It was a huge thing. And Courtney just looks at her and she's like, yeah, and that was a big deal. You remember? And that's when Kim's like, oh, I totally get it. I totally know how you feel because that's how I felt about the Christmas lights. And Courtney just looks at her. She's such a good arguer and she runs circles around Kim and Kim is too self-absorbed and too self asset to, to understand what's going on, right? And Courtney's like, I think the bigger issue is why do you feel a need to take everything? So then Courtney just lays it out like an air. She's like, I think the one thing I want to know is like, why, where does this need come from? And Kim's like, need. And she's like, yeah, this need, like, why did you need to do it? Like, if you want to learn something about yourself or be introspective, like maybe you should ask yourself where that drive came from. Then Kim, again, she thinks on such a shallow level. She was like, Oh, well, I wanted to do it because like I need because I was always dressed up like like a doll. She's talking about Kanye. I was always dressed up like a doll and like I just wore it and like pretty things. And like, you know, 
because of like what happened, all these roadblocks came and I was forced to do it on my own. And it was important to me that I could have my own voice and make my own decisions and prove that I can do it for myself. And for the first time in my life, I'm the one that's doing it. And I'm not. So basically this is when Kanye used to always give Kim low self-esteem saying that she's tacky and can't dress. I mean, he wasn't wrong, but Kim, why is your self-esteem wrapped around whether you can like put together a cute outfit or not? The interesting thing in this uh, is that Kim reveals two things, right? One, do you not see the irony that you went from glomming on to what Kanye told you to do, right? And feeling like you had no voice and I'm going to do this and be independent and finally show the fashion world that I am talented too. I'm not just a pretty doll that Kanye dresses up. And you went from being Kanye's doll to glomming onto what Courtney did and copy and pasting her creativity and calling it your own. You know, I used to think that when Kim glommed onto people's looks and stuff like that, they were culturally appropriating because usually it's a, was some Arab woman or a Latino woman or of course a black woman, right? Um, but I now see that's just Kim's personality. She is a colonizer. She takes other people's stuff out of her need to feel like she has some type of talent or importance. Whatever that person has, she needs to observe it. She's like no face from Spirited Away, I swear. She is like no face. Watch that movie, um, uh, 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 Spirited Away. It's an, anyway, it doesn't matter. She has no face from Spirited Away. And you just take other stuff. And the thing is when you take it with no abandon, you absorb it like it's yours. It's weird. The fact that she is sitting there with no irony, talking to Courtney like she did. And Courtney is saying, Dolce & Gabbana, I did all the work. They stole my work and they slapped your name on it. And we saw it and Kim is still sitting there in delusion, acting like she actually put in work too. And this was part her stuff too. Y'all, this is wild. But Courtney's not letting off the hook. She says, yeah, we can talk about all that later. But I think I'm talking about a deeper thing. What is this need you have to take everything? No matter what you have, it seems like you never feel it's good enough. And you're always looking to take everything, even what other people have. So then Kim's like, no, but you don't understand. It's not financial for me. It's not, it's not about the material things. And she's like, I'm not talking about the material things. I'm talking about why is your only motivation? Like she said, I mean, she's, and then Courtney called her. She's like, I do think it's financial. I do think that if there's anything that can bring you more money, more fame, more accomplishments, it, and whatever will bring you more, that shiny thing that will be like a gold star to the rest of the world, you need it. It doesn't even matter if you're interested, if you want to do it, you just need it, right? So Courtney is like, there is just this underlying drive to take, consume, dominate, and it's like it's never enough. Kim hears all that and she says, well, you know, also we're not close. Like, we don't even hang out anymore. We don't even have family dinners. Kim, are you trying to say because you don't feel close to Courtney, you feel like you can just dominate, but you don't just do this to Courtney, you do this in life. I will always say, right? That's when you look at the way people treat the people around them. I mean, friends, lovers, associates, you know, people like joke like, oh, I don't care if my friend's cheating on their man or I don't care if he's cheating on this woman. But I kind of do because if you will look the person that you love in the face every day, right? And lie. What are you capable of with me? And I know life is more complicated. I'm not talking about like bad situations. I'm talking about those people. I'm not talking about somebody that's like really wants to live. No, I'm talking about those people that are constant cheaters. They're always out. They're always lying. They're always, if I send you still $10 out of somebody's pocket, what makes you me think that you're not going to steal $10 out of my pocket? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's, it's, it's a lot. Kim's a lot. But guess what? Courtney is not letting up. So then Kim lets her jealousy slip out when she was like, you know, well, you're off in Travis lab and, and we get it. You're in love. Do your thing. And she's like, um, 
Travis is in the studio till nine o'clock every day. And no, I don't have time for a sister's vacation because, um, you know, I'm with my kids or Travis kids or we're both with the kids. Okay, fine. But also, um, you guys don't call me. You guys don't include me and stuff. That's because they're jelly, jelly, jelly. And also, I do want to say, Courtney brings up, well, remember when she smacked Kim's face into the wall so hard, her foundation smeared the wall. And then Courtney jumped in and held Courtney down so Kim could get some punches in. And Kim walked around bragging about how she won that fight. Kim's always been delusional, but let's continue. So then Kim's like, listen, I'm sad that you feel this way. And I'm sad me accepting this job made you feel like this position. Never mind, Kim was trash talking her across the table at Dulce and Gabbana. Listen, imagine the fact that Kim doesn't feel stupid, that this woman was sitting there talking trash about Courtney, saying she's jealous and she's a hater and she's the biggest diva of all to Dulce and Gabbana the people that knew and were smirking that they were literally screwing your sister over they must look at kim like she is the dumbest girl ever like seriously how does kim not feel rage that they played her like that also you know what is really really interesting right the fact that you know what is also like really 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 interesting the f and this is the super interesting part remember how she said that that deal with skims fell apart you know why it fell apart the streets are saying it fell apart because Kanye was the one creative directing the Skims times Dolce and Gabbana. But when he started dating Bianca, it fell apart. And that's why they couldn't do the Skims collab because she went from depending on Kanye for doing everything to just stealing Courtney's work. And so anyway, Court Kim's like, you know, I'm sorry, this and that and blah, 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 blah. I, that makes me sad. I would I would have hoped me taking this opportunity wouldn't have hurt our relationship. So Courtney just looks at her like this bitch, right? And she was like, yeah, well, you know, thank you for acknowledging how hurtful your actions were. And, and then she just looked at her because I know Kim was expecting an apology too. She just looked at her and then Kim's like, okay, well, I got to go. And Courtney was like, oh, all right. And she rolled off the bed because they were talking on the bed and got up. That's right, Courtney. You better let her know. Anyway, the scene ends with they are still hot and tight. Kim's mad she didn't get an apology, or at least she's acting like she's mad. Courtney is just over the whole thing. And honestly, after this, I see why Courtney is like, I'm just going to do my own thing because the fact that Chris and Kim would do something so slimy, have no remorse, sneak around, and also to the fact of the fact that they helped someone else screw her over. I can see how she's like, what's the point? Because if I ever get anything for myself, you got, and, and Kim wants it because it's something she wants and it's shiny, then Kim's going to take it for herself, right? And if, and so the only thing I'm relegated to is doing low level stuff. And if I ever get anything that Kim thinks is worth it, Kim's going to come and take it. And Chris is going to help her. And again, this is the whole thing. Clo Courtney's realized, oh, so this is, this is how things go. Chloe is fine to play that second position fiddle. She's fine to take whatever scraps because she just wants to sit at the table. And Courtney is like, I am the table. Chloe, have fun with the scraps. And I also realize why Kim's so jealous of Courtney. Courtney is an infinite well of creativity. And Kim surrounds herself with creatives and she works well with creatives because she is like a muse or a doll or like whatever. But Kim actually wants to be creative and she couldn't get it with Kanye because, you know, but I think she looks at Courtney and she's like, but why her? This is my sister. We I should have that creativity, too. I think she really resents that. I think she really does. But let's keep going because now we got Chris with um Corey uh shucking and driving doing the things yes and mrs chris ooh this here is nice y'all let's get into this scene. anyway this is a filler scene they're trying to like chris is going to get a full body scan to see what's going on with her spoiler ain't nothing going on for her she's just getting a health check out right Corey is there and all his corniness talking about some ooh you know what was you doing in there it was a 55 minute scan what was you doing in there dreaming about me miss jenner and she's like oh of course of course now go run me my car come on drive me where i need to go y'all chris and Corey, i guess but Corey, listen that's the man for chris let's keep going shout out to my ninja Corey. <laughs> 
then we go to Chloe's scene and she's shooting a campaign for Netta Porter. Kim walks in and she's like, how's everything? And she's like, she's like, everything okay? She's like, and Kim starts crying. One thing, and I'm not making fun of Kim's tears. I mean, clearly it's pain. But this is what I mean about Kim needs to step away from the Botox. You know, now when she cries, she covers her face because she realized Kim can't cry. Her face is so immobile that she literally can't like make facial expressions to cry. And you know what they say? There's a study, a bunch of studies that say that when you get Botox, um, it literally decreases your ability to feel empathy, not just for yourself, but for other people as well. I'm just saying. So then they're talking about Kanye and his remarks. Girl, shut up. You're mad that Kanye messed up a bunch of vision stills, didn't help you with the skims to a uh, times D and G. And she's like, you know, the thing is like, you know, it's so scary when somebody changes and I keep hoping I see like that person I love. But then in the next scene, Kim admits that Kanye's been like this for the last decade and she's been cleaning up these mess messes for the past decade and she's not helping him anymore. Girl, we get it. Kanye is, was, may still be, is he a bigot? I, I listen. Is he a bigot? Like, what's going on? Is he prejudiced? Clearly, does he have issues? Is he self-hating? Yes, at times. But I do think most Black people that marry into the Kardashians might actually have a little dash, a little, little sprinkle, sprinkle of self-hate. That's my opinion, right? Or, or you don't like Black women or there's things of your culture that you look down on, right? But Kim, stop with the cap. And I also realized something about Chloe. Chloe loves to be a savior. She love, and I think that's the reason why her and Courtney are bumping heads. Courtney's not crying into her arm. She doesn't need somebody to comfort her. She doesn't need somebody to hold her hand through it. She's fine. She's happy. Chloe doesn't know how to deal with people when they're happy and when because when people are happy, Chloe feels like they don't need her. It's so sad. I guess from like being the ugly duckling in the family, she was raised to be the helper always in the family. But if she's not of service, she feels like she's valueless. Isn't that crazy? So you actually can't be around happy, fulfilled people because you don't understand where your place is and you resent happy and fulfilled people because it makes you feel unwanted. Oof, y'all, let's keep going. So like Kim's like, you know, did I do the right thing by posting this? I don't know. And Courtney and Chloe's like, of course you did. Kim, stop acting like you don't have a whole team of 50, 11 people that look over everything. This was a PR crisis mode. You cut ties with Kanye because he was pulling you down. But let's also not forget what was going on at that time. Kim was posting subliminals on her Instagram. You were happy Kanye was following because Kim thought she was on her way up and Kanye was on his way down. She never thought that her growth would be stagnant and Kanye would come back up. Now, please don't get me wrong. What Kanye did was trash, right? And I wouldn't have supported it. But Kim, come on, you got that kick in because you wanted to just like everybody else. As a matter of fact, Kim is now managed by the guy, Ari Emanuel, that was responsible for the cancellation of Kanye. Kim, shut up. Then Chloe, completely unironically, is like, you know, Kanye's a grown person. He did what he did. And I said, okay, true enough. And she's like, you know, and like he has a big following and he needs to understand that like his actions have consequences. What he says, like it riles him up. It has, it gets the fans. And I'm like, how can you see that with what Kanye said? The fact that he had to say, nobody in the family's anti-Semitic. We didn't think you were, but thank you for pointing that out. But also you can say that, but you don't understand the way you might be making things harder for surrogate children in this world by the dumb things you say about how you feel about your son and how you're not bonded and how it's weird and how it feels like a stranger and how you wish, you know, it was weird to take the baby, the, the woman's baby and it was yours. You made all these ignorant A remarks about surrogacy, but you don't see how people could be mad at you that you are making it harder for surrogate kids you're adding to the stigma and you're doing something that is very emotionally abusive to your newborn son all because you don't want to talk about the deadbeat daddy that he has well not deadbeat but the emotionally neglectful to you daddy that he has you can say all this about kanye but you can't see how your chopped and screwed face and the way you guys are striving for a portion of womanhood that doesn't exist the way you throw filters on and then lie and say it's my bet you don't see how that's screwing with a bunch of young girls images 
You don't see that? Oh, yeah. It's just Kanye, right? He needs to be more responsible. Let's continue. Then Chloe says to Kim, you know, I'm not on your level, you know, and I'm not going through the fact that you said out of your mouth, I'm not on your level. And Kim's nodding like, yeah, that's true. Anyway, she was like, you know, Chloe goes on to say, you know, people probably wanted to cancel Kanye for a while. And he used to always be like, I'm not cancelable. And probably this is the last straw. And that's okay. They really thought Kanye was done. And I'm like, is Kanye cancelable? Because he is back. He is back. And in a year or two, once he starts releasing stuff, his little cult of Kanye is going to grow even more and more. Meanwhile, Chloe, Kim, what's these Hulu ratings looking like? I mean, you know, you got one view from me, but I don't know. So just that quick, the Harriet Tubman of our time, Kim Kardashian says, you know what? I just have to be strong and move on, you know, because... I, I, I hate what's happening. I hate the way it's affecting me. How does somebody make anti-hateful remarks and you haven't said anything about the people that he might have affected? This is just all about how it affected you. Not even your kids, but just you and your business opportunities. And then with no irony, Kim says, you know, and I have to be strong because I'm walking into a meeting and this meeting is with Uncle uh, Engelbert. He's a big architect and Kanye introduced me to him and it reminds me of like Kanye and the best times and the best time he gave me so basically everything that Kanye gave you was the way he put you on to new things right and as soon as he was no longer useful to you you threw him away you didn't try to rehab you didn't try to help you threw him away okay I mean that's cool you know but if my daddy had done stuff my mommy had done stuff that got them canceled yeah I would have definitely like not distance myself, but I would have actually been like, this is unacceptable. But on the other hand, Kim, you just left him because you're like, he just has to fill the act. You Again, you thought you got everything you needed from Kanye. And then that's it. And then we see not five minutes later, after she was done crying about it it's so bad, they're literally being like, how many bedrooms do you need in the new house? Comes Kim's building a new house. She's taking over. Um the house that Kanye was helping her design again y'all listen Kanye is trash is trash but he's been trash for the last 10 years and Kim admitted that she's been helping him hide his trash waves it was a situation that was beneficial for Kim and I don't care what anybody says when it was no longer beneficial for her she cut ties and that is her right that is her right good for you do what makes you happy yeah he's doing what makes him happy but don't sit here and try to act like you are harriet tubman mother Teresa. so join her truth and maya angelo all rolled into one god let's move on so then you know they're like looking at like all the mess that's going on and kim's like you know i just get so stressed out kim how many houses do you need right She's building another house, you know, what was me, <laughs> all this stuff. And then Court Chloe makes this weird joke. I don't like the way she jokes about surrogacy. I really don't. She was like, Kim was like, you know, we have all these kids and like 12 cousins and you know, and Chloe's like, yeah, I know some of them arriving by stork these days. I don't like the way she makes the surrogacy the butt of the joke. Chloe is there's something wrong i mean we all know there's something wrong but ugh, he is so i can't believe she ever fooled us into thinking that she was like courtney's personality anyway so then kim does the same thing she always does she's like you know i'm designing this house i'm doing this i'm doing that and then with no irony she's like and it's just so much stress to design it but you know what i gotta do what i have to do and then with no irony she turns to the architect and she's like listen i trust you this is your house your project i trust you to do everything you keep talking about how you've completely stopped standing on Kanye, who was also designing the house, right? And you literally turned to the architect and with no irony said, now you do it. Is it pathological? Is it just me? Is it pathological? Because the thing is, 
Good for you, Kim. You have the money and the resources. You delegate, but Kim doesn't even want to admit she delegates. She's going to sit there and talk up, probably say, we co-designed it. When you literally told this guy, you can do everything you want. I don't want any input. Anyway, y'all, let's continue. Oh yeah, by the way, the architect gave her, because apparently they're flying in beams from a samurai's house in Japan, an old samurai's house. So the uh, ankle with no irony gives Kim like a picture carved in wood of the samurai. It's like an original picture. And Kim's like, I wanted that. I'm like, I guess you do. You're taking hair, bones, nails, anything for that witch's brew. Y'all, let's continue. Then Miss Self Unaware, part two chloe has the nurse to say you know i am a firm believer in cosmic energy i'm a firm believer in signs mm. i'm like who's gonna guys who's gonna be the one to tell her mm. when tristan met you he had a pregnant fiance ditched her lied all this stuff when you were pregnant with true he gave you no peace cheated on you all the time barely was there for the birth the surrogate he cheated on the surrogate didn't even let you have peace with that got another side baby i don't know do we live in the same universe chloe i'm confused but you know what let's let her speak her mojo jojo also it must be nice to be rich everybody is stroking kim's ego girl that's what you're paying them for right but also i do want to say one thing about this whole episode Kim is wearing her dehydrated Momo wig and she keeps trying to put it in a bun and baby it is sitting in the bun in the back like a party city wig yes Kim give us nothing give us nothing anyway we go back into um Chris and Corey you know shugging and jiving doing the thing they go back to get the results Chris is healthy she has the body and brain of a 40 year old Corey is sitting there munching on these snacks he was munching last time it made me think does he not get milk come and be in her little foot boy uh, uh, uh excuse me miss chris may I, may I go excuse myself to get some mcdonald's ma'am and she's like no he is literally yeah but then again i looked at Corey baby those hips need fuel that man ain't never miss a meal shout out them shout out to my ninja Corey. then it's back to kim chloe and uh courtney they're all meeting at kim's house and chloe starts taking shots from the door courtney walks in with her shoes on and kim's like oh can you take your shoes off like you know i don't like shoes on the carpet so then Chloe start, I'm sorry, Courtney starts taking her shoes off and she's like, oh, my socks don't match my outfit. Chloe's like, I don't think your outfit matches your outfit. I'll tell you one thing about Chloe. She's the epitome of that old adage. Watch the way people treat people they have, they don't need, they feel like they don't need anything from because that's who they truly, truly are. Ugh. Then Chloe is lit. Chloe and Courtney sit at the foot of Kim's bed and Chloe is acting like her damn lap dog slash assistant. Chloe, uh, they're like, so how do you feel, Kim? And Kim's like, I'm exhausted. And Courtney's like, oh, why? Did you have you not been sleeping? And Chloe cuts her off. She's physically and mentally exhausted. Chloe, shut, your shut up. So then Chloe starts picking at Courtney. They start talking about the birthday party. And she was like, yeah, I talked to mom about the birthday party. Uh, Courtney's throwing her birthday party. And I think she thinks that like she's on to us. And she's like, I'm having it at my house. And Kim's like, oh my God, that's so nice. And Courtney's like, Chloe says, that's so nice coming from you. I'm sorry, Chloe, shut up. God, I keep mixing these K's names up. And she was like, um, so Courtney says, I don't hate my mom like you think. And she's like, I feel like you feel like she's senile or something. And she's like, I don't hate Emma. I just don't appreciate the way we were raised. So then Chloe starts over talking her. No, that's just so nice because you're usually so what's wrong with you, Chloe? Like every time Courtney comes on the scene, you're picking at her. You want Chris to know Courtney doesn't like you. You want Kim to know C Courtney this and that. Like, God, you, you know what I will say? 
what do you call that thing that right now Chloe is so miserable she feeds on the misery and she doesn't know her place unless people are miserable so she can be their savior y'all this is bad vibes for real so Courtney starts talking about like how fun the party's gonna be and Chloe's still going I think it's just so amazing that you out of all her children are the one doing this considering your issues and Courtney's just like yeah so I just thought it would be a really fun idea if you know everybody comes to the party dressed like Kris Jenner and Chloe literally over talking her just make sure you make it nice make sure you make it nice for mom Chloe is so mad that Courtney doesn't need her help planning she doesn't need her help creating she doesn't need her shoulder to cry on she genuinely just wants Chloe and her light and her magic to come but Chloe doesn't realize she has light and magic she thinks her only value is being somebody's footstool that's sad so then Courtney looks at Chloe and she's like, I know how to plan parties. Like, thank you. I've been planning all life. She's like, I know, just make sure it's nice. Like, make it nice. She wants Courtney to ask her for help so bad. So then Courtney says, you know, mom said like, wow, this is the nicest thing anybody's ever done for me in a long time. And uh, Kim, you know, she's in her little depression sweats. She's like, oh, that's so sweet. Cause she doesn't care, right? And Chloe is like, and gets a look on her face and pulls out and calls Chris on the phone because I guess she is scuttling up to be Chris's face. And then Chloe, it's almost like Chloe wants to call Courtney a liar without calling her a liar. She's like, hi, mom, it's me, um, Kim and Courtney. And we're just sitting here talking about how nice it is that she's throwing you a party. And she has a smirk on her face as a Christian is gonna be like, oh God. And Chris is like, no, this is so nice. This is so nice. And she's like, oh, yeah, she said. And she's like, yeah, you know, Courtney, she's my favorite child. Chloe looks annoyed. Chris, I mean, sorry, Kim's like, I knew it. And Courtney is beaming with pride. Then we go back over to Kim's house. She's chilling for kids. She comes up to Saint. She's like, can I spend some quality time with you? Saint is looking at her like, who are you? Baby, you can tell the nannies where he's at least Saint. Saint loves his nanny. Kim is like that annoying aunt that comes and tries to act like, did you get that butterscotch disc I sent you for your birthday? Then all the kids come in and Kim's like, and it, it get it, I get it, right? Kim's like, it's just like, I have to be the person that's doing everything. It's like, brush your teeth in the, the bedtime rituals and the waking up. And I'm like, yeah, but Kim, you said in family court, you were always the person doing that because Kanye wasn't around. Okay, so what's changed in your life? Also, I get it. Raising kids is hard no matter how much money you have. And you always have mom guilt. And I, I, I would imagine you never feel like you're doing enough and you're always torn. And I get it. But the fact that Kim just doesn't count her blessings and be like, Kim, be real, the nannies have the kids 90% of the time. And it's not just Kim, most people that run mega corporations, how often do they really see their family? I mean it, you know, like Kim, shut up. Like, again, why can't Kim just be real and be like, listen, I'm really blessed. I have a lot of help, but even with all that help, I just feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I'm torn apart. It's a different, listen, is it the same struggle as a single mom with no help, no money, no family, no nannies? No. Is it just as hurtful to me? Absolutely. And does it deserve to be respected? Yes, because anybody's feelings deserve to be respected. But Kim won't be real. Kim wants to sit here and act like she's doing it all on her own. And that's why people scoff and roll your eyes. Stop it, Kim. Just stop it. But let's continue. So then Kim wants to take her mind off the stuff. So she goes to see her Malibu house. She wants to show Chloe before the renovations start. And they go to Malibu and she's like, it's always been my dream to buy a house in Malibu. And then she walks in and she's like, this is all gonna be regutted. Imagine like this all concrete and all this and that. And that's when it clicked in my head. You know that Malibu mansion that everybody's always dogging Kanye out talking about, it's still sitting there and he gutted the whole that. Yeah, he bought that for Kim. Her dream was a Malibu house. He bought that to make it happy. And when he figured that she wasn't coming back, he ripped everything out because he's temperamental and dumb. And I just want to say, all these charities that Ye and Kim are a part of, y'all could have fed people for years and spent how many kids to college for wasting this. But it's their money. They can do what they want to do. But I'm just saying. 
So Kim's walking around the house. It's a gorgeous house, gorgeous views. And she's like, yeah, like this is going to be so perfect. You know, a nice little, it's going to be a half party house and a place for the kids to chill out. And Chloe is like, don't even tell your kids you have this house. Chloe is such a weirdo. And Kim's like, yeah, um, anyway, blah, 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 blah. I think I'm going to make this room a playroom. And she's like, you don't need to have a playroom everywhere you go, you know. The playroom is the effing beach. You're mad that a multimillionaire wants to build a room in her house where her children will know where the house is and can come and play? Yo, somebody check on Tatum and True because mm, something's not clicking with Chloe. There's a lot. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's giving boy up bunnies. It's giving somebody call social services it's giving you need to be quizzed to make sure you're in the right mental space because you got a lot of animosity toward children these days you know but i guess that's what happens when you're made a parent um without your consent but you can talk to tristan about it because he's going through the same thing unite two people that both resent that they got sons by different people let's keep going interesting enough um chloe's like i can't wait for all these memories she's the most amazing heart she's doing this because she wants it to be a family home okay yeah that is really sweet of kim right um whoever's on her team you know typical libra stuff she treats really well but then chloe says something interesting where she's like you know and you know i can't wait because it's memories and at the all at the end of the day that's all we have memories that's how chloe loses her life no chloe at the end of the day all we have is the present and all we have is each other because memories aren't even reliable but that's why Chloe is always photoshopping herself with an inch of her life because she wants to remember reality like that but let's move so they go to Courtney's house she's getting ready for her Chris themed dinner she is getting dressed up like Chris yo she look all of her daughters look like her right Chris has strong dreams Christian is a beautiful woman right um so Courtney's like you know I definitely earned major daughter of points because you know nobody was going to she wasn't doing anything and this is her 67th birthday so why not chloe is sitting there hating from the sidelines and this is what i mean about chloe she's so you don't see a cancer when they're being petty they do stuff to enrage you and get under your skin but they do it so that nobody else can tell that they're doing it case in point right don't ever get on a cancer's bad side because they literally love poking gaslighting like they'll get you back right and make you go crazy and then play victim in public so they said so we go over to chloe's house and she's doing like the blonde version of chris and she's like i'm going as chris dressed up like miranda Priestley. i don't know who that is but it's when chris had the blonde wig and like you know the flower pants and stuff like the lemon flower pants and she's like i'm going as her because that's my favorite era and interestingly enough She's dressed in head to toe. She was wearing head to toe, toe Dulce and Gabbana. And that's what I'm wearing. I mean, you can't make this up. Chloe, you are so low down for this. Kim and Courtney made up. Chloe is a triangulator, right? She's worried that Kim and Chloe are going to get tight again. She doesn't want that because she wants to be Kim's pet. She doesn't realize Courtney is off of being a uh, uh kim's pet forever okay so chloe doesn't want courtney and kim to get tight again she wants to be the pet also courtney is doing something nice with chris i guess she's had beef with chris for the past couple years but now she's squashing it and chloe is worried that courtney and chris are going to get tight again too because she knows that they're only tight with you because courtney in their minds was on some bs so you're intentionally on a party where Courtney is on a high. You're intentionally dressing up and head to Toldo and Gabbana in the flower lemon stuff that Courtney said was ugly, that Dulce and Gabbana was mad that she wouldn't wear. And that's one of the reasons why they kind of like stabbed her in the back and went to Kim because they want they were insulted and they wanted to insult her too. And you're doing all this at a party. Y'all, something's wrong with Chloe, honestly. Makes me think, what do be happening between her and Tristan? So then the hairdresser is saying to Chloe, everyone's going to be jealous of you. And Chloe's like, I mean, that's all I needed to hear. Everything's going to be, everybody's going to be jealous of me. <laughs> Done. Chloe is so sick in her head. I'm going to think she is the biggest problem.
Bill's over to um, Kim's house and she's getting dressed up. She's the black version of Chris, I think. She actually looks really pretty with short hair. Her face was made for short hair, but Kim's like, I'm an extension girl. I'm going to be long hair to the day I die. I mean, I hear you, right? Some people just aren't short hair, but Kim looks really beautiful with short hair. And North is dressed up um, as Chris too with a little short wig. <laughs> and she's like, and Chris, Kim's like, I'm so excited for this. And to give these memories with North and good for her that they're having some fun. But, you know, Chloe's mad that everybody's praising uh, Courtney so much. Anyway, the party was a success. Chloe was mad. Courtney was on a high. She is so creative. It was a really cute party idea. And it was really great. But it shows you don't need to rent out everything in the halls of Paris to have a good time. Kim was just like miserable in her own life because she was just like, ugh. Anyway, y'all, let me know what you think of the episode. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget we have a whole playlist that you can watch. And also, whose side are you on? Are you buying Kim's BS or are you on Courtney's side? You know we team Courtney, but that's because Kim was just being ridiculous. Let me know what y'all think of in the comments. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.